start of your Middlesbrough career, you you were linked with all sorts of clubs. I think you mentioned an interview, you know, Man United were a rumored club, AC Milan. So what was it about Middlesbrough? Why did you why did you make the move to Middlesbrough um, just to start with? Yeah, so basically, you know, my time came in, uh, to an end with Leeds United, and uh, there was interest from Man U, uh, but it was bef- it was at the at the um, um, the Christmas per- uh, time period, you know, before then. Um, and, uh, you know, at the, end of, uh, at the end of the season, obviously, you know, it was a big disappointment for me, you know, with, with uh, going down with Leeds and, and what have you. And Middlesbrough uh, contacted me at that time, uh, Steve McLaren. Um, and, uh, you know, they were, they were talking to me about the plans that they had with, um, you know, with the players that they were bringing in, you know, with Jimmy Hasselbank. Obviously, Mark Schwartz, I knew from the national team. Um, Hugo Echiog at the, at the time was my, uh, was my neighbour in Leeds. He lived across the road from me as well. So, so basically, you know, they came in with a, with a good offer and, uh, and I saw that they were serious about, um, you know, trying to make a good team. Mm. And, uh, and, and, uh, and also one of the big, big uh, pluses for me was that I didn't have to move. You know, I stayed in the same place and uh, I traveled from there and um, uh, and that was basically, you know, bit by bit these things uh, were, uh, uh, you know, the key factors of, of me choosing Middlesbrough. It's funny you mentioned Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank because I remember at the time um, there was like speculation that you were going to move to Middlesbrough. It went on, the deal went on for a couple of weeks, I think, but I remember that we signed you or we announced the signing of you and then Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank was the next day. I remember as a Middlesbrough fan, that was obviously incredible. We're bringing these two strikers in. We, the, the club was a club on the up, as you say. We just won the Carling Cup. But do you think the focus bringing you and Jimmy at the club was we need more firepower, we need to, well, players like you to take it to the next level? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it gives, gives the impression that, that uh, the club is serious about, uh, you know, winning stuff. Um, obviously, they did really well for the Carling Cup uh, before, that was the year before me, I think it was. Mm-hmm. And um, we got into the UEFA Cup position uh, through that as well. And, uh, um, you know, when you see the club actually bringing in top quality players, um, it's a huge plus for you as a, as a player as well, because you think, you know, these people are, are, are serious about actually you know, trying to win stuff. Mm-hmm. The European football, as you say, must have been a big draw. I mean, you played, you know, for clubs like Celtic and Leeds, they have massive European history, but for Middlesbrough, this was a first-time thing for the club, and it, it was, you know, it was a massive deal. Yeah, it was a it was a massive thing. I mean, obviously, with Leeds, we did really well. You know, when we got to the semi-finals of the Champions League, I played also in Croatia in the Champions League, and you know, with Celtic in Europe. So, I had quite a bit of experience in that European football, and uh, that was that was another, you know, another big bonus. Um, you know, coming to Middlesbrough, I, I wasn't sure that we were going to go as far as we did, you know. I mean, that was something special. Um, but uh, it was, it was uh, it's definitely, definitely, you know, obviously getting to that uh, UEFA Cup position is, is, is another, was another huge bonus for us. Yeah. Just when you first came into the club, you, you know, you started really well. I think it was five goals in your first four games. The, the back end of that season, it was a bit frustrating sort of injury-wise for you. Was that the first time you'd really had that kind of thing in your career? Because you played pretty consistently, you know, throughout. Yeah, throughout the exactly right. I mean, I wasn't used to not playing, you know, and being injured. Um, and, you know, up until that point, I had a lot of games under my belt uh, with, uh, you know, I still was quite young. I was, I think I was 28 or something like that. But, you know, a lot of people don't realise that... Um, through your career, you just you play so many games, and I'm I'm a, I'm not really the the lightest player, you know. I'm a heavy player, and it starts taking a, a toll on on your body after a while, you know. And my time in in Middlesbrough, especially to, um, you know towards the end, I had a lot of problems with my Achilles, you know. And uh, um, I think that was that was when you know. Um, injuries started to affect me and, and, and that before that with Leeds I almost played every game if I was available obviously I was, I was available for most games 
um, Celtic as well when I was in Dinamo Zagreb here as well and uh, and in Melbourne obviously you know so before that I'd, I never really ha- had that experience of, of not actually you know of, of, of being injured mm. was that I mean was that difficult for you obviously you were, you were in a really talented squad of players a good group but that must have been difficult because you, you felt that first season you hadn't shown what you were capable of very difficult very difficult as I said uh, well I, I to be honest, uh, I'm the type of I was the type of player that if you told me to 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 uh, you know run a hundred yards, you know I'd do it reluctantly. But if you put the ball in front of me, I would do it all day, you know, without even thinking, you know. And so when you're injured, you're doing a lot of these exercises without the ball, and that for me was uh, very frustrating. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Very frustrating, you know. I was always I always loved going out training. I mean, I, I you know people said. You know, there's been a lot of things in saying that I was a lazy player and all that sort of stuff. But I loved training. Training was, uh, you know, obviously games as well. But the training sessions I, I loved. And I, especially at Middlesbrough when I was there, I used to stay behind with uh, Schwartzy sometimes, sometimes um, Brad Jones and, uh, and uh, uh, Steve Round. We used to do a lot of extra work after every session, you know. I wanted to, I wanted to work on my finishing more, you know, and um, uh, I really enjoyed that. So, so when, uh, when, when I was out training and having to do things that I don't really like doing, that was very frustrating. Mm-hmm. What was that squad like to, you know, to train with? You've mentioned some names already, like Mark Schwartz, or, you know, Hugo Egyog. There's others like Geis Gamendieta, Gareth Southgate. Was the, 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 the quality must have been incredibly high to go into a training session like that. Yeah, I mean, they were, they were good quality players, but the, the most important thing was they were a good bunch of guys as well. I mm. think that's more important than being... I mean, it's great to have great players and that, but when you have a team where everybody gets on well with each other, that's a massive thing. And that was the th- my time at Middlesbrough was... Uh, really uh, enjoyable because I used to love coming into training every day. I like being with those people, you know, the, the actual, the, the people, you know, when it comes to, uh, when it goes from the, from the Elaine, uh, you know, the kit lady to, you know, to the people that work in the, in the, um, um, you know, the canteen there. And, and uh, I used to actually just love coming there because it was, you know, it was a, it was a very friendly club. You know, and the players uh, themselves uh, got on really well together. And as I say, going into that next season, um, you really hit the ground running again at the start of the next campaign. And that was when you started to show what you were, you know, show the Middlesbrough fans what you were all about as a player. Um, there's one game in particular I remember, I'm sure you remember as well, the way at Birmingham City, you score an incredible goal over your shoulder and in the top corner. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Yeah, I mean, I remember that game. That uh, was a away game at Birmingham and... Uh, Two goals. I mean, you know what? The thing is, you know, when you go out as a player, uh, uh, obviously as a striker, you are, you know, the, the goals is what you're judged on at the end of the day. Um, but you know, there was a lot of games there where you know you, you you give it all and you don't get that little bit of luck and it doesn't go in and all that sort of stuff. Well, you know, you see, and then pops a game like something like that Birmingham game where. And in the first half, I scored a couple of... Uh, the first goal was, you know, it was a cross and I got on the, uh, at the end of it. And then the second was, was something like, you know, that you can't plan something like that. That's like in the moment, you know. And I think, you, you know, after, when you train so, so uh, long, those things just happen automatically. And uh, uh, I think... Um, you know, I think it also takes time for people. You know, when you go to a new surrounding, it's very difficult to, you know, just come in straight away and automatically be, uh, you know, on fire. It's, it's it's difficult. You need to take... It takes time to get used to players. You know, the midfield players that you're playing with, the defenders, you know, how they like to pass the ball, how they like to... Well, do they like coming out with the ball? Do they like... You know, and it takes time for a team to, to gel like that, you mm-hmm. know. And so maybe I think... maybe. Maybe that was where it came into. You know, the first the first season, you know, it was 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 because of injuries. I wasn't, you know, it's hard to keep getting that form. You know, but in the second season, I think um, it was I was a, a lot more consistent. 
you mentioned about the sort of the workload, the number of games that you've been playing as well. And that season, I think we had, you know, 60 odd games. You were involved in 50 odd of them. And, you know, you're going all over Europe in midweek and then you're playing again on the Saturday. And I suppose when you say about a squad coming together, you've got to hit the ground running in a season like that because, you know, there's so much, you know, we're competing on so many different fronts. Exactly. And you, and that's what happened with, with uh, when, when we were at Leeds. We had a big problem there, whereas we played so many games. There was, you know, over 60 games in the season. And uh, we didn't have the depth, you know, uh, to, do, to do that. I think Steve McLaren did well um, by actually bringing in players and good quality players like Yakubu later, later on as well um, to, to give us that depth to be able to be, uh, you know, firing on all fronts. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think with with Leeds United, we had you know we had a good good squad over there, but it cost us later on because we didn't really have the depth, you know, in all positions, you know, to mm-hmm. be able to um, uh, compensate. You know, if somebody gets injured, you know, or there's a, a season like that, there's there's a lot of games, and you know, anything's possible. People get injured, and you have to have people to be able to replace them, and and that's where the big you know the big man Uniteds and you know Arsenal's and Chelsea's and all that. They had the the backup. And at Middlesbrough at that time, of course, we had the young players coming through. You know the likes of Stuart Downing, James Morrison, and you know they're pushing the senior players all the way. Exactly. I mean, uh, Stewie Stewie D was one of the most talented players that uh, you know, a young player especially that was that that I'd seen. You know, what he could do with his left foot was. You know, he was, uh, was you know, was, he, was, he was a special player, you know. Um, yeah. And uh, what can I say? I, I really enjoyed playing with Stewie D up front, especially as a youngster. Mm-hmm. Morrison as well. Mozza, he was, a, he was a, you know, really hard worker. He, you know, and he, and he liked to play. He liked to play the ball forward. I, I liked that about him, you know, as a midfielder. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, there were some really good youngsters coming through. I mean, Riggsy was there as well as in the defence. Um, who else? Who else was there in the in the back? Pans, Pans, yeah, Joe Parnaby. Very good. I mean, very good youngsters, mm. local lads as well. Yeah. Just before we get onto the uh, the European games, the, the incredible games. There's, there was a point in that season where. Um, we played against Aston Villa, and it was, you know, it was one of those games where everything goes against you. We lost, lost the game four 0 in the end. And I remember vividly there was a, a supporter threw his season ticket, Steve McLaren, and it just showed that you know the frustrations bubbling over at that point. Could you have envisaged from that scenario the run that we would then go on to the end of the season? Not really, <laughs> not, not really. I mean. Uh... With football, the, the funny thing with football is that nothing is uh, known up front, you know. We, we, our game was, uh, well, sport is that type of a profession where uh, when you go out on a, on a pitch that day, you don't know what's going to happen, you know. It's different when you're, you know, a musician, you practice all your things, what you do. We, with, with football, you practice really, really hard, do everything right, and it doesn't go right for you. You know, and that might, or you do it all, all the exact same thing and it does go right for, for you, you know. So it's very hard to put, uh, put a, um, it's very unpredictable. Uh, at that time, no way would I have thought that we'd go, with, uh, go to that uh, big run. But you know what happens? Sometimes, you, especially in teams, you have to hit a really a, a low before you can actually, st- you know, pick yourself up and start going again. And I think maybe that's that's what we did. We did in that sort of sense. Mm-hmm. We got together and uh, said, you know, let's uh, let, let's go at this. And you know, you need, sometimes you need a bit of luck as well. Mm-hmm. The, the the European the quarter final and the semi final games against Basel and Stal Bucharest. Um, I think that you know your performances in those games for Middlesbrough fans is you know is incredibly memorable. And um, just your take on those, you know, those home games at the Riverside where, you know, it was lightning striking twice, two incredibly difficult scenarios to get out of and we, and we did it. What, what are your memories of those games? That was, I mean, those, those games are going to be the most, uh, the, you know, the memories about those, you know, those nights are, are nights I'll never forget, you know, the, the atmosphere in the stadiums, the fans. 
you know, from, from after 10 minutes, uh, you know, everybody wanting to go home and thinking whatever, what's going to happen to, uh, to the finale, you know, uh, you know, the first game, um, you know, that was the, f especially the, just say that the first game, and we start, we start like two nil, and everybody's thinking, you know, even even ourselves, we're thinking, what's gonna, what's gonna happen, you know? And uh, I think we went in at, at half time and just, you know, said to each other, we got nothing to lose, we got to go out and go for it, and that's it. And uh, you know, to, to the, the the comebacks, I mean, those things you you got to watch the game. You can't, there's no words to describe that, you know. Mm -hmm. And obviously for Massimo Macaroni, who <laughs> with the greatest respect to him, he's a bit down the pecking order compared to you and and Jimmy and, and you know Yukubu, but he's the one incredibly in both games that, that makes himself a hero as well. Yeah, I was so happy for Mas because he's a he's a lovely, lovely bloke, a really nice guy. And uh, you know, he was always there, even even though he wasn't maybe first choice, he was always uh, he was always there and positive and uh, you know uh, making himself available, uh, you know, for, for the for the team. And it was so, it was, I was very, very happy for him that he actually got the, you know, the winner in the first and the second game. And uh, it was really, really, as I said, special moment, you know, the mm -hmm. relief that when he, when those two goals went in for both games, yeah. um, to be honest, we, we didn't, uh, we couldn't believe what was going on. You know, we made the final of the UEFA Cup. Mm -hmm. And in, in that final, obviously, in, in, uh, on to Eindhoven and, Another incredible atmosphere, the incredible day in the club's history. Um, I think a lot of Middlesbrough fans will look at, and I'm, I'm sure you remember this as well, there's a moment in the game where, where you go down, you get a barge in the back and the referee is not interested. And yeah. The Middlesbrough fans, I think, probably still talk about that to this day, thinking, you know, that, that pivotal moment could have changed everything in that game. Yeah, well, I, th I mean... I thought that was a definite penalty. And, you know, I'm not. I thought. I mean, I know. I know that it was a definite penalty that uh, on me. Um, but you know what? That's in those sort of games, uh, you need you need a little bit of luck. You know, and that that's what it is. Even I had a, a chance in the first half, which I think the goalkeeper saved. Did he? Or what was it? And you know, if that had went in, it could have been a different story. But you know, I think. Especially in those one-off games like that, you need a little bit of luck, you know. And I think that day we didn't have it. At the end of the day, we we got beaten by a very good team, and you know they probably deserved to win. But you know, there's always that that feeling, thinking, you know, what could have been, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what it is. Yeah, I mean, as you said, incredible team. Yeah, you know, players who went on to do even greater things as well. You know, like Danny Alves was in there. Here's as Navas as well. Um. They had, a, they had a really good team. I mean, we, we, you can't say, you know, obviously we had to go forward later on and, you know, try to try to snatch something and they took advantage of that. But, you know, it was... I honestly thought that we, we had the luck on our side, you know, considering the last two games. Mm. But maybe we, we just ran out of luck that day. Yeah, so that was the end of the, uh, the season, the end of Steve McLaren's time at Middlesbrough. Most of the players, I'd imagine, were probably... Looking forward to putting the feet up after you know those sixty odd games, but then you were off to the World Cup as as captain of Australia, so that you know the, that momentum must have just kept going. Really. Exactly, exactly. I mean, you know what? Uh, uh, thing is, uh, with these things, people who aren't in the game. I mean, at the end of the day, that's your livelihood. That foot, uh, you know, playing football and that that game actually after that final, I was devastated for months after that. You know, but. Yeah. Because I honestly, honestly thought we were going to win, you know, we were going to win that game. But uh, you have, you got to pick yourself up afterwards. You know, you got to pick yourself up, and and you know, a new a, a, a new um, a new uh, thing. You know, at the at the at the time, I was very disappointed after that game. Uh, you know, that we lost it, and I remember actually a story about that was. When I when I came home, I had that silver silver medal, uh, and I was disappointed. I didn't even want to wear it or anything like that, you know. And uh, I came home, and in in when I was living in in Leeds, and my son had a couple of mates, neighbours there. They came over and they said, "Oh, 
they said to me, oh, can, can, can we see the medal? You know, can we see the medal? I said, oh, you know, I'm thinking, you know, I don't even want to be, I don't want even to think about that. You know what I mean? I was so disappointed. And, and then uh, they go, can we take pictures with it? You know, and, and, I, and I go, yeah, if you want. And, and that, uh, one of those stories is that, what the, what the, the story, of what I'm trying to say is that um, these kids, uh, they said, oh, you know, we, we would be so happy if we would ever in our life get a medal like that. And that made me think at that, in that moment, you know, how disappointed I was. And these kids, uh, you know, they wanted to take pictures with it and all that sort of stuff. And I, and what happens is later on over time, you become proud of it. You know what I mean? You become proud that you, you know, okay, disappointed that you, that you lost the game, but you're proud of the actual, you know, getting into there. And, you know, obviously, you, you know, you do your best. And, but uh, as I said, when, you, when you're playing um, uh, after that, you've got to pick yourself up and you've got new, new goals to to go for yeah because as you say just touching on that um about the silver medal again i mean what it represents to us as a club is not just that individual game but also you know the, that incredible run you know we'd also beaten roma and, and you know it's gone away to rome and exactly and won there as well incredible exactly clubs. i mean that was you know for a club for any club you know even clubs like liverpool they were wrapped to be in finals like that i mean and for a club like Middlesbrough, you know, uh, for the fans and for you know, it's a it's a it's a huge thing. You know, at the at the time you're disappointed, but you know, with time you realise, you know, that it was something special. Mm -hmm. So going into the next season, obviously Gareth Southgate moved from being your captain to your manager, which I, mm -hmm. I imagine must be a, a strange transition as well. But lo looking at what you achieved the next season, I think it was your best goal scoring season for Middlesbrough. He seemed to really get the best out of you, even in his early days as a, as a coach. Uh, that for me, G uh, Gareth moving from player to, to coach in the same team was a very, very difficult thing. And, you know, he, he did a really good job. I mean, obviously he's shown over time, you know, that he's uh, got what it takes to be a manager, but you know that, that that's a weird thing. You know when you first he's he's your captain and then goes on to be your manager. To be honest, I I have heaps of respect for Gareth. He's first of all he's a top top bloke. You know always got on well with him. He's a really nice guy, and he's an honest guy and a decent guy. And for me, for me, uh, uh, those qualities in a person and in a manager are the most important things. You know. Mm -hmm. Now, whether he's good on the field with tactics and all that, he's, and he was, he was, you know, obviously he's been in football all his life. But for me, uh, I think that's all the, the manager has to be uh, uh, like for, to get the best out of me. Mm -hmm. Now, I was disappointed, obviously, at times when he put me on the bench and whatever, but I never, ever, you know, created any problems or anything like that because he left me out and all that because I had... I, I had a lot of respect for him, you know. I thought, you know, uh, as I said, for all those reasons before. Mm -hmm. Just while you mentioned about the, the transition from being a player to a manager, just because it seems topical to bring it up. Obviously, Jonathan Woodgate now has gone from being a Middlesbrough player to, to our, our manager, and he's someone that you know from Leeds and from Middlesbrough, and, you know, Robbie Keane as well. Just then, yeah. um, would you ever have envisaged Jonathan as, as the manager, and, and um, are you keeping an eye on his results as it see how he gets on as well? Woody, uh, to be honest, I, you know, he wasn't one, you know, that I would think that he would be, you know, you know, go, going into management. But again, one thing about Woody, Woody is he's, he's a top bloke, first of all, you know. Um, I think, uh, uh, I think he's, you know, he's, I, I don't know, you know, I don't know his, as, him as a coach, obviously. I know him as a as a player and, a, and as a mate, you know, as a teammate. And uh, for me, um, he's got, as a personality, he's got all the traits of, of being a good manager. You know? And just to finish, Mark, I, as I said, I do appreciate your time here. Um, you obviously left, left Middlesbrough, uh, but you remain the top goal scorer at the Riverside Stadium. I, didn't, I wasn't sure if you were aware of that. Um, 
Really? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's twenty. So twenty five years at the Riverside this this year, and, and you're the top, the top goal scorer. And, um, and a lot of the fans that've been voting for their best team of all the players who played at the Riverside, and you know you were uh, uh, out in front as one of the strikers as well. Just um, I wonder how looking back on your whole time at Middlesbrough, it must have been you know a great time in your career, and, and, and you must be proud of what what you achieved. I was very, I was, as I said, I was very disappointed. Not disappointed, I mean, how can I say? Um, what happened with me at the end was that, you know, uh, the last six months of, uh, of my contract, uh, I kept, my, my managers kept contacting uh, the club saying, you know, are we going to talk about a new deal, this, that, the other thing? Because I had a lot of interest from other clubs, you know, all around, all around uh, the UK and whatever and uh, and I had a huge interest from Newcastle you know they they, they really wanted me Sam Elvis really wanted me to, to come over there and uh, um, you know and I kept saying to, to, the, to them uh, to the club look I've got interest from other clubs you know to cut a long story short the last day of the season I think I scored two goals against Fulham I think it was yeah that's right yeah um, and then they called me in for a meeting and they offered me a new deal. It was the last day of the season. And by that time, you know, it sort of puts a bad taste in your mouth a little bit, you know, as because you think if, if other clubs are, you know, really showing a lot of interest and then, uh, you know, they wait till the last day of the season, that was a little bit disappointing. But when it came, when it came to the club, I, I thoroughly enjoyed my three years there. And as I said before in the, in the first thing, I loved coming to, to the training ground, loved uh, the people who worked there. You know, everybody was really, really nice people. You know, uh, the staff, uh, you know, the physios, the, the people who worked in the offices, everybody was, uh, you know, was great. The kit man and lady, um, and the players, you know, as I said, the players were really good. But a lot of them had achieved so much in their in their um, uh, in their careers so far. But everybody was really nice, down to earth. You know, no, nobody thought that they were, you know, you know, they didn't stink or something like that. But um, and that's what I really enjoyed about about um, Middlesbrough Football Club. And obviously the fans, you know, the fans loved. So passionate, and I was very proud that I could be um, that I was involved in that uh, you know uh, that in that time frame where you know we got to the UEFA Cup, and you know we were competing. You know, when you see times like this, you know you you, you start to sort of uh, um, sort of um, what is the word for it? I don't know the word for it. Um, yeah. Appreciate, appreciate yeah. those things. Yeah. 